Good evening, and welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Resurrection. Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins in your order of worship. We're on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of unsearchable wisdom and mercy, liberate us from the bondage of self and empower us to serve you and our neighbors, that like your servant, David Ogahater, we might bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. Through Jesus Christ, the captain of our salvation, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Daniel. In the third year of the reign of King Jehoiakim of Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it. The Lord let King Jehoiakim of Judah fall in his power, as well as some of the vessels of the house of God. These he brought to the land of Shinar and placed the vessels in the treasury of his gods. Then the king commanded his palace master to bring some of the Israelites of the royal family and of the nobility, young men, handsome, versed in every branch of wisdom, endowed with knowledge and insight, and competent to serve in the king's palace. They were to be taught the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the royal rations of food and wine. They were to be educated for three years so that at the end of that time they could be stationed in the king's court. Among them were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah from the tribe of Judah. The palace master gave them other names. Daniel he called Bethelthajar, Hananiah he called Shadrach, Mishael he called Meshach, and Azariah he called Abednego. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the royal rations of food and wine, so he asked the palace master to allow him not to defile himself. Now God allowed Daniel to receive favor and compassion from the palace master. The palace master said to Daniel, I am afraid of the Lord my king. He has appointed you your food and drink. If he should see you were in poorer condition than the other young men of your own age, you would endanger my head with the king. Then Daniel asked the guard whom the palace master had appointed over them, Please test your servants for ten days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. You can then compare our appearance with the appearance of the young man who eat the royal rations and deal with your servants according to what you observe. So he agreed to this proposal and tested them for 10 days. At the end of 10 days, it was observed that they appeared better and fatter than all the young men who had been eating the royal rations. So the guard continued to withdraw their royal rations and the wine they were to drink, but gave them vegetables. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and skill in every aspect of human literature and wisdom. Daniel also had insight into all visions and dreams. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this evening is a portion of Psalm 96, found in your order of worship. Let's read it in unison. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord, honor and power. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. 
Glory to you, Lord Christ. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. David Pendleton Overhater was the name a Cheyenne warrior would choose on his baptism into the Christian tradition and the Episcopal Church. The first Native American to be added to the church's roster of saints Okahata, or making medicine, was born in Indian Territory, now Oklahoma, in the late 1840s or early 1850s. He showed promise at an early age, and by the time he was 14, had already earned a leading spot as a member of one of the Cheyenne's military societies. He fought in skirmishes and battles against poachers, encroaching settlers, and the U.S. military until he was taken as a prisoner of war in 1875. Okahata, along with 75 other Native Americans, was taken to Florida. Captain Richard Henry Platt was assigned to transport the prisoners to an old Spanish fort, the Castillo de San Marcos, near St. Augustine, Florida. Shackled together, they were taken across country on foot, wagon, steamboat, and in trains, most of the party having never even seen a train before, much less ridden on one. Certain they were heading for execution, at least two attempted suicide en route, and several attempted escape. At least one man was killed during such an attempt. Pratt turned out to be a fortunate choice for those who were taken prisoner. While he did strongly believe that Native Americans should assimilate into Euro-American culture, he valued and cared for the lives and potential of the Native men in his care, a far more enlightened and humanitarian perspective than most of his superiors who thought that the native population should be subjugated, or worse yet, completely annihilated. Conditions at the fort on arrival were poor, with prisoners lacking beds, food, and clothing, but Pratt quickly worked to improve these failings and made sure that the prisoners' needs were met. He also soon removed their shackles and put them to work, but not to make money, but to improve their own living conditions. Later, as trust developed on both sides, Pratt convinced his superiors to allow the men to carry non-operational rifles, perform guard duty, and work outside the fort, as well as have passes on Sundays to attend church and camp unsupervised on a nearby island. Pratt offered to resign his military post if the experiment failed. And again, Okahata proved a capable leader. Pratt appointed him as first sergeant of the prisoners, with a duty to organize morning military drills, ensure hygiene and dress code, and even oversee the prisoners in Pratt's absence. Pratt also offered the men education, classes and everything from English to carpentry, and in return, they educated townspeople and tourists in archery. They made handicrafts and drawings to sell. Okahata also proved to be a prolific and talented artist. His work is today in various collections, including the Smithsonian. Within two years, he and many others were fluent in English, and several men were released to pursue further education. In 1877, an Episcopal deaconess, Mary Douglas Burnham, began to make arrangements to sponsor prisoners to serve as church sextons and receive further religious education. In April of 1878, all of the remaining prisoners were released, and Burnham arranged funding from Alice Key Pendleton and her husband, Senator George Pendleton, to bring Okahata to St. Paul's Church in Parisville, New York, along with three other ex-prisoners, who each had their own sponsors. The church's priest, the Reverend J.D. Witts, took charge of their education, 
on agriculture, scripture, current events, as well as welcoming them into his own family. Within six months, Okatu agreed to be baptized and was confirmed shortly after. He was baptized at Grace Episcopal Church in Syracuse, New York, choosing the biblical name David, to David and adopting the last name Pendleton in honor of his sponsors. He would be ordained a deacon in 1881. Shortly after his ordination, Okahata returned to Oklahoma. There he was instrumental in founding and operating schools and successful missions, though through great personal sacrifice and often in the face of apathy from church hierarchy and resistance, if not right operate opposition from the government. Even after formal retirement from mission work in 1918, he continued his ministry of service, education, and pastoral care among his people until his death on August 31st of 1931. Okahata was added to the Episcopal calendar in 1985, and both Grace Episcopal Church in Syracuse, where he was baptized and ordained, and the chapel in St. Paul's Cathedral in Oklahoma City are dedicated in his honor. He is remembered as God's warrior among the Cheyenne Indians of Oklahoma. As a young deacon, he told his people, you all know me. You remember when I led you out to war and I went first, and what I told you was true. Now I have been away to the east and I have learned about another captain, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he is my leader. He goes first and all that he tells me is true. I come back to my people to tell you to go with me now in this new road, a war that makes all for peace. Amen. Our service continues in your order of worship. We're on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us stand together and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three, found in your order of worship, or on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O 
O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Continuing in your order of service or turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, my friends. Peace. Again, good evening. It's wonderful to see you all here. Please be seated. Uh, just a couple of reminders coming up in the life of the church. The parish retreat is October 1st through the 3rd. If you're interested in that, there's a lot of information in your email. And if for some reason you didn't get that email, please reach out to me. I'll be glad to get you updated. Uh, we do hope people will participate. Uh, it'll be a really good time to get away. Uh, I'm sure there are other things, but that's the one that's on my mind. So that's what we're going to go with. For right now. Again, it's wonderful to see you all who are here in person. Thanks to those of you who are joining us online or later. We're grateful that you have taken time to pray with us. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Father. 
Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in them. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace on the last day Bring us with all your saints to the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God to the people of God.
because communion prayer can be found in your order of worship on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, remember, God made you. God sees you. God knows you. And God loves you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.